Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, our Wednesday night Bible study with George Dello. I need to apologize. Uh, uh, just when I was getting ready to go on, we lost our internet and phone service, and uh, I don't know what's going on, but uh, having difficulties with that. And uh, if it doesn't stay up, we will just uh, uh, continue this uh, next week and uh, uh, move on from there. If it holds up, then we'll just uh, get through our Bible study. So I want to welcome everybody on uh, Facebook Live as well as free conference call. And uh, again, this is our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, this Sunday at 11 o'clock, you can join us for our Sunday morning service. And uh, we're going to be having uh, communion uh, this Sunday, first Sunday of the month. And uh, you're invited to uh, uh, join us uh, for that. Just have your elements available and uh, you can uh, share in communion with us. Also, Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, we also have a uh, Bible study uh, at that time also, especially for those that want to go into the deeper things. And uh, we invite you to join us for that. Before we uh, get into the Word tonight, let's just take a moment and uh, have a word of prayer. And uh, then we will uh, uh, pick up where we left, left off last week. We were talking about divine encounter, uh, learning how to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to walk with God, uh, to whereby we can experience Him in our uh, daily walk with Him. And uh, through that experience, uh, we can come into the fullness of life that God has for us as he leads us and guides us by his spirit and brings us alongside himself to do his work. So uh, we'll be getting into this just a moment. Let's go to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for this time that uh, we can look into your word and uh, look into the deeper things that you're calling your church into in this hour. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, whom you have sent to lead us and guide us in all the truth, to teach us, to open the word to our understanding, and to uh, root it into our hearts where it can bear the fruits of your kingdom. Lord, we want to commit this time into your hands that you will speak to us. Uh, Lord, that your word will work effectually in us, and that you would be glorified in everything that's said and done. And we want to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise God again. Uh, this is George Dello and our Wednesday night Bible study. I apologize for being late. We've uh, uh, having some uh, technical difficulties. We lost our internet and phone and uh, just getting it back. I'm hoping it's going to stay up long enough to get through this. Uh, otherwise, we'll just uh, pick it up next week. But uh, we started a series several weeks ago uh, about divine encounters and learning how to uh, how to walk in the Spirit of God, how to come into that, that God consciousness and uh, uh, follow the principles that God gives us in His Word to bring us alongside Him. And uh, it's a very interesting study. And uh, I want to begin those on um, uh, Facebook Live. We have PowerPoint. You can follow along with the Scriptures. And uh, I just want to go back over... Uh, where we've uh, been uh, going through. And uh, these are seven principles that uh, Henry Blackaby gives us in his book, Experiencing uh, God. And uh, just to go over these real quick, and then we'll pick up where we left off. But uh, uh, these are the principles we really need to understand so that we can begin to walk in these things. And it begins with the fact that God is always working and moving around us. In other words, uh, God is always actively working, speaking, uh, in us and through us. He is always uh, at work to uh, bring us alongside Him, to uh, bring about spiritual growth, to continually move us uh, into His will and purpose. He's always pursuing us for a greater and deeper fellowship and intimacy with Him because ultimately that is God's uh, purpose for every one of us. He's always moving to direct us into His will and purpose so that we will fulfill His plan and purpose. Every one of us has been called into a, a ministry, a calling. God's gifted us, given His Holy Spirit, and uh, He uh, has called every one of us uh, to Himself in order that we would carry out His mission upon this earth. He's also uh, given us His Holy Spirit 
uh, in order to make us to the praise of his glory. We exist for God's glory, and uh, we are here to serve him and to glorify him in our bodies and our spirits and everything we do. He's always calling us into a place of obedience to him, recognizing that we're not we're own, our own. We belong to God. He bought us with a price, with the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we exist, again, to glorify God and to fulfill the mission that he has given us to carry on the works of Jesus Christ. He's always moving us to follow him and his plan and not our own. And uh, uh, finally, he is always bringing us into the fullness of life as we experience in him uh, through obeying him and uh, uh, walking out his plans and purposes for our lives. So let's pick up from here. Uh, God, again, God's highest calling for each one of us is that we have that intimate fellowship with, with him. He, he is always calling us to his side, to, to walk with him, to, to follow him, to seek his daily guidance in our lives, that we, again, become a spirit people that are led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is always about glorifying the Father and the Son. He is always about fulfilling the will and purpose of God. And so uh, the, he's given us that Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us and move us into that place of maturity, move us into that place where uh, we walk with God and do the things he's called us to do. Now, as long as we don't live this way, the reality is we are living outside the will of God uh, because, again, uh, this is what he's called us to. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, uh, Paul uh, makes a, a, a statement here that we really need to understand and apply in our lives. He says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So Paul is, is, is uh, 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 exhorting us here. We, we need to understand this. Our body is the temple of God. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit that God has sent to us to be in us, that, that this has been God's ultimate purpose from the very beginning of, of time, that, that God would be with us in an intimate and personal way whereby we can live our lives according to the voice of God. That voice of God is His Holy Spirit within us. We're not our own. We, we, don't, we don't have uh, the right any longer. When we come to Christ, we come in, in surrender to his lordship. We surrender ourselves to him, to his will, to live for him. God bought and paid for us with the blood of Jesus Christ. We belong to him. God paid the ultimate price in order to redeem us and bring us to himself. And so, therefore, Paul says because of this, because God bought us, we belong to him. Our purpose is to glorify God in our bodies and our spirits because we are God's. Our body, our spirit, our mind, everything belongs to him. And so we are, uh, uh, we are to, to do God's will and live for his purpose and, uh, uh, in everything we say and do. And Paul also tells in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, uh, that the, the totality of this, of glorifying God in our body and spirit. Paul says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whatever you're doing, doesn't matter. Is it natural, spiritual? Everything we do in this life, we are to do to God's glory. Again, living for him in obedience to him, doing his will, uh, uh, following him in his purpose, doing the things of his kingdom. Everything is about God. We walk with him. We talk with him. We live for him. Everything about our life is supposed to be about him. He has the preeminence. We live under his lordship. We live under the power of his spirit to be led of him in all things. So whatever we do, does it matter? We do everything to the glory of God because we, we belong to him. He owns us. When Israel came out of Egypt and they traveled through the wilderness as God was bringing them to the promised land, God personally led them uh, as he brought them out of Egypt and directed them to that land. He led them as a cloud by day and a fire by night. 
God was always with them, directing them, speaking to them, guiding them in his will and purpose. Because again, just as he did with us, God uh, uh, bought and paid for Israel to be his own special people. Uh, And he redeemed them out of Egypt uh, by his miracles and signs and wonders. And he, he brought them out of there. Uh, and preserve them from the angel of death by the shedding of the, the lamb's blood in order to bring them to himself, in order that they would be his people, he would be their God, and they would fulfill God's plan and purpose uh, in the promised land. Well, God's still doing the same thing today. He's never changed. The difference is with Israel, God could not actually dwell uh, in their hearts because of the problem of sin. There was no means at that time to get the sin out of the temple of their bodies so that God could dwell in them. But now through Jesus Christ, God has made provision for us to purify us from sin by the blood of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit, God himself can now dwell in us and now puts his spirit within us. So now rather than having a a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to guide us, we have the living God within us to lead us and guide us in everything we do. So just as Israel had to follow the cloud and the fire, we too must follow the Spirit of God. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, Paul tells us, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, what is Paul saying here? Well, if we really understand this, he's basically saying that in order to be the children of God, in order to be the people of God, we have to be a people that are led by the Spirit of God. Those that are true sons and daughters of God are those that have submitted and yielded themselves to God and are being led by His Spirit so that we, again, can do the things that God has called us to do. When we really understand these principles, especially this idea of God's ownership of us, it should change our focus from self to God because we are so uh, rooted in this uh, system of the world. Before we come to God, uh, we, we are in a uh, a system that is rooted in self-love, that is rooted in, in doing everything for ourselves, that's rooted in pride, it's rooted in, in, in the lust of the flesh and all of these things. When God brings us to himself and he delivers us from that spirit of the world, he delivers us from that power of sin and that selfishness, but we need to have our minds renewed according, according to the word of God in order to bring us out of that uh, self-living and become a people that live for God. So instead of putting ourselves into every request uh, of God, we come to the place of just God. Everything's about God. What is God's will? And, And then as God reveals his will to us, we have a responsibility to align ourselves with that instead of trying to get God to align with our will. And, and, and to be honest, this is one of the biggest mistakes that the, the modern-day church has made over the years is that we, we have this tendency to decide what we want to do. Uh, uh, we may get some direction from God, but we put it into our own hands and decide that this is what we're going to do, where we want to be and how we want to do it. And then we ask God to bless it. We ask God to come and anoint it and bless it and do all these things. And that is completely opposite. It is completely backwards to what God has called us to. It's the other way around. We need to find out what God is doing, and then we come alongside him. Then it's already anointed. It's already prospering. It's already guaranteed to produce everything that God wants to produce because it's God's doing it. And so we come alongside him, we align ourselves with his will, and we begin to do what God is doing. And this is what we talked about a couple of weeks ago in John chapter 5. The example that we have was how Jesus uh, did what he did. He didn't do anything for himself. He only did what he saw the Father doing. 
and he aligned himself with that. And that's our example. We're to do the same thing. He must always have the preeminence and be the focus of everything in our lives. Everything we do has to be directed and focused of God. So what does he desire? What is he doing? Where is he going? And then my purpose is to follow him. So just like Jesus, that's my goal. I need to find out and see what is God doing? Where is he going? Where, uh, 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 what is he trying to bring forth? And uh, what is his desire? What is his will? And then I agree with that. I align myself with that and come alongside God. So again, our best example is Jesus and how he lived for the Father alone, perfectly doing and completing everything the Father gave him to do. He knew what to do by staying focused on the Father and what the Father was doing. So again, that's what we need to do. By focusing on him, by looking to him in our prayer, in our devotion, listening to the voice of God, learning to be led by the Spirit of God, learning uh, as the Spirit of God opens the Word to us and shows us and brings us to an alignment uh, with what God is doing. And then when we submit ourselves to be Jesus' sheep, he brings us into that same relationship. In John chapter 10, verse 27, look what Jesus said. My sheep, in other words, those that follow me, those that are my true children, my sheep hear my voice. Now, you really have to see what he's saying here. Now, Jesus is making a statement of fact. If we are his sheep, if we are a true child of God, we should hear his voice. Okay, it's just a matter of applying ourselves. It is just a matter of us doing our part to listen, to, to seek him, to search him out, to, to, to apply ourselves to hear. Again, as we are in the word and the spirit, God will speak to us. And notice what he says, and I know them and they follow me. How do we follow him? By hearing his voice. How do we hear his voice? by the Holy Spirit within us. We've all experienced this. If you've been a Christian for any any uh, time at all, you, you know what I'm talking about. When you're in the Word or, or when you're praying, there's like a light goes on or you, you, you sense this inner voice within you speaking to you. That's what we're talking about. So Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So if you were to look up this, uh, look this verse up in the Greek, you would find that the verbs, all the verbs in this, in this passage are in the present tense, meaning that they are continuing uh, uh, on. So in other words, if you were to read this from the Greek, you would say, my sheep hear and keep hearing my voice, and I know and keep knowing them, and they follow and keep following me, and I give them and keep giving them eternal life. In other words, the point he is making is this is a constant lifestyle. This is a daily thing. We walk daily listening the vo to the voice of God and following him each and every day as God leads us in his will and purpose, as God is working to bring about our spiritual growth and bring us into that place of maturity, as God is bringing us alongside him and showing us his work so that we can join him in what he is doing. And as we do, again, look what Jesus says. As we come alongside him, as we follow him and do his work, he gives us eternal life. That eternal life he is talking about is not just uh, this life that we're going to have an eternity with God, that, that we will live forever with God. It encompasses all uh, of, the, of the kingdom of God, all the things of God. Remember, the covenant that God has called us into 
and you can read this in Malachi chapter 2, is, is one whereby God promises to give us life and peace. And that word life encompasses all the blessings of God. So again, uh, uh, as we were talking about earlier, when we come into this relationship with God, uh, as we follow him and come alongside him, we will experience in God in ways that bring us into the fullness of life that God has for us. Let me tell you something. There is nothing like the blessing of the experience, the reality of God in your life. When God moves in us, when God moves through us, when, when, when we are doing God's work and, and God ministers through us to touch somebody, his gifts are manifested, people get healed, people get saved, uh, gifts manifest and uh, uh, the Holy Spirit moves and we see things happening in people's lives, there is nothing that compares to the blessing of God that comes through that. It's as Psalm 16 tells us, uh, uh, God brings us into that pathway of life where we experience his pleasures, where we come into the fullness of his joy. That's what he's talking about. That comes through this experiential reality of God in our daily lives as we follow him. Remember, God is always working. God is always speaking. God is always moving. It's up to us to recognize what he is doing to hear what he is saying, and to follow him in the things that he shows us. Well, we do this by learning his voice. We do this by spending time in devotion to know him in that that intimate way, so that just like Abraham, we too become the friends of God. And as the friends of God, just like he did with Abraham, God entrusts his plans and will to us. He shows us things to come. He he shows us uh, what he is doing. It it delights God for us uh, to to seek him and to come alongside him. God has given us his Holy Spirit for this very purpose. Look what Paul tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12. Notice what Paul says. But as it is written... I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, Paul is saying God has prepared things that will astound us. God has prepared things for those that love him, for, for his own special children. God has prepared things that, 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 that we haven't even thought about, things that, that having entered our minds uh, that, that God wants to bless us with, that God wants to give us, okay, that he has prepared. Notice that Paul saying God has already prepared these things for us, for those who love him, okay? But look what Paul says next about this very thing. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. In other words, Paul is saying that when we come alongside God and we begin to seek God, to hear his voice, to to learn his voice, to, to know his voice and to follow him, The Spirit of God he's given to us is going to reveal these things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, that nor has entered the heart of man. God will reveal them to us. Why? Because, again, it's all about bringing us into this experience of reality of God to, 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 to live out this fullness of life, this abundance of life that God wants us to have. And notice what he says. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit, again, is always working, always moving. What's he doing? He is seeking out the deep things, the profound things of God in order to do what? To reveal them to his people. To reveal them to his two sons and daughters of God that love him. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. And I can add to that, uh, just as Paul just said, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God and the ones to whom the Spirit of God reveals them. Amen. And I'm going to show you uh, uh, who's going to show it to in just a second. But look at this. 
Now we have received. If you are a true child of God, you've been born again by, by the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ has, has redeemed you. He says, you have received not the Spirit of the world, but you have received the Spirit who is from God. We have received the Spirit who is from God. Why? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us, us to God by God. Don't you want to know? Wouldn't you like to know the things that have been freely given us by God? Wouldn't you like to know some of these things that no eye has seen or nor ear has heard nor have even entered into the heart of man that God has prepared for those who love? Wouldn't you like to know the things that God has prepared for us? Well, God's put his Holy Spirit in you in order to show you these things that God has given to us. But again, it all comes about as we learn to come into this experiential reality of God in our lives, that we walk with God. You know, I was, I was doing a, uh, 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 a teaching last night, and uh, uh, one of the things I mentioned there, and uh, uh, I was reading this the other day, and it just struck me how, uh, uh, how profound this is. But you go back into the Genesis, and uh, if you remember when they were given the genealogy of the, of the Israelites, and when they came to Enoch, it, the Bible says that, that uh, Enoch pleased God, and he was not. In other words, God took Enoch straight into heaven with him. And, and, and do you know why it says that he did that? Because the testimony of Enoch was, Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God. And, and, and when I thought about that, I said, that's it right there. That's what God is saying to us. That's what God is speaking to his church. This is what it's all about. Like Enoch, God wants us to walk with him. That's what this is all about. And when we're talking about walking with God, listen, when God created Adam and Eve, what did he do? He walked with them in the Garden of Eden. What does that mean? Well, it means that God was right there with them, walking with them, talking with them, fellowshipping with them, keeping a company with them. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and this is what God's talking about. This is what God is looking for from us. And, and that's what I'm saying. Listen, God's doing his part. God is always walking, working, talking, moving in us, with us. He's always there. He's always present. The problem's not on God's side. The problem's on our side. We have to come to him. We have to, we have to come alongside him. We have to open our hearts, open our ears. We have to seek. We have to serve. We have to come alongside to learn his voice, to learn how to be led of the spirit, to learn how to walk with God. And as we do, and we develop this daily walking with God we will begin to move into that place that Adam and Eve walked with God, that Enoch walked with God, that Jesus walked with God, that the early church walked with God. We will come into that place so that we can experience this reality in our own life and come into the revelation of things that God has prepared for us that's going to bless us, that's going to give us this life and peace beyond what we can imagine so that we can live in this fullness and abundance of life in the spiritual reality of God every day. That's what's called abiding in Christ, dwelling, remaining, staying in Christ, being the, the, the connected to God continuously, on, uh, on stopping. That's what it means to abide in Christ. To be born again means that we abide, we live, we remain in him. 
walking with him, talking with him, living with him, uh, uh, following him, obeying him. This is what it means to walk with God. Now, look what, look what Paul said there. It's the spirit that searches these things. It's the spirit that uh, knows the things of God. He knows what God's doing. He knows God's will. He knows God's purpose. He knows God's plan. He, <laughs> Jesus the, the, and the Father and the Holy Spirit are all one. They're all uh, abiding, mutually indwelling each other. They're all one. They're all uh, uh, connected together. And so the Holy Spirit knows everything that we need to know, and he is continually listening to the Father and attempting to reveal those things to us. So he tells us that the Holy Spirit reveals them to us and that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. He is the one that tells us things to us. Now watch this. John chapter 16, verse 13 through 15. Look what Jesus said. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Okay? Now, now, now listen. You got to get a revelation here. Okay? When Jesus says the spirit of truth, okay, Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth, right? Jesus is the truth. Okay? God is truth. So when Jesus says he, the spirit of truth, okay? He is the spirit of truth because God is the God of truth. Jesus is the truth, okay? So he's the spirit of truth, the same way he is the spirit of Christ, okay? So when he says he will guide you into all truth, okay, on one hand, yes, it has to do with this, the Holy Spirit will guide us in the Word of God. He will open up the Word to our understanding. He comes to teach us. He comes to reveal truth to us. He comes to impart that truth into us. But let me take that one step further. He also is guiding us into this walk with God, this intimacy with God. He is guiding us into God himself, who is the truth. He's bringing us into the experience of reality of God in our lives. Do you see that? Okay. Now look what he says. Look what Jesus says. The, the spirit of truth. He will not speak on his own authority. Okay. Remember what Jesus said? When, 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 he, when, when he confronted the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, when he, was, when he was ministering to the Jews and trying to show them who he was, what did, what did Jesus say? I don't speak on my own authority. Well, whose authority did he speak on? He spoke with the authority of the Father. In other words, Jesus only spoke what the Father told him to speak. Now, look what he's telling the church. Look what he's telling you and me right here. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. What does that mean? Whatever he hears from the Father. What, what, what did Paul just get through telling us? The Spirit is doing what? searching all things. Yes, the deep, the profound things of God. He is right now searching the deep things of God to do what? To tell you, to tell me that he's not coming to speak on his authority. He's not coming to speak uh, 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 on his own uh, uh, thing. He's coming to speak on the authority of the Father. He is speaking to us what he hears from the Father in order to do what? Because he is here to do what? To glorify Christ, to glorify the Father, to glorify God. He will glorify me. Now look what Jesus says. What did Paul say? What did Paul say he was going to tell us? I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared, those things that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us that are freely given to us by God. What did Jesus say? 
He will take what of take he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And what are the things of Jesus? What's he say? All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. I'm telling you what. <laughs> This, this this ought to bless you right here. This ought to get you excited right here. This ought to get something stirring up inside of you. God is calling us alongside him because he wants us to have everything that is his. Do, do, do you know what Hosea said? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not only are God's people destroyed for a lack of knowledge, they, they, they are robbed for a lack of knowledge. They, they, are, they are missing out for a lack of knowledge because they're not walking in this place with God to whereby the spirit of truth can guide us into this fullness that God has for us. He can break open the truth of God's word. He can break open the truth of God. He can bring us alongside and he can speak to us exactly what the father is speaking to us concerning the things that God wants us to do, his will, his purpose, his revelation concerning the things that God has for us, everything that God has prepared, everything that God has given to the Son belongs to us. Why? Because we are the joint heirs of Jesus Christ. We are joint heirs with Jesus. So Jesus is telling us the Holy Spirit is going to glorify him. Why? Because he's going to take the things that are Christ and he's going to declare. He's going to make them known to us. He's going to show us things your eye has never seen, that your ear has never heard, that your mind has even, not even conceived, he's going to reveal these things to you and to me so that we can glorify God and we can, we can experience the fullness, the abundance of life that God has for us, that life and peace that God wants every single child of God to have. He wants to take those things and declare them to us as the joint heirs of Jesus Christ. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> this is so good. You just want to just stay right here uh, until somebody gets a hold of this. People to get this revelation of what this is all about. When we talk about what God wants to bring us into, whereby we walk with God. And when we walk with God, God wants to give us everything that is his. In fact, Luke tells us that he, he it, it pleases, it's God's good pleasure to do what? To give us his kingdom. It's God's good pleasure to give us his kingdom and everything that that kingdom consists of, everything that's included that in that kingdom, God wants to give to those who love him. He's prepared it for those who love him. Everything that that word Zoe, that, that God life, uh, entails healing, deliverance, salvation, uh, 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 meeting our need. I mean, everything you can think of, every good and perfect gift that comes down from the Father above, God wants to bless his children with if we would come and walk with him, if we would come and live with him in this intimate experience of reality on a daily basis. So as we learn the voice of God and his Holy Spirit, as we learn to hear and to follow him, like Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If you're a sheep of God, you can hear his voice. You just got to listen. You just got to listen. And as we learn to hear his voice, as we learn to follow him, we will begin to experience him as he brings about his will and purpose in and through our lives. As God works with us, as God works in us, as God works through us, you're going to experience God's reality. You're going to have these divine encounters that are going to bless your socks off as you learn to walk every day with God, as you learn and do his will, you're going to experience God in ways you've never dreamed of. You're going to experience God in new ways well beyond this natural world. Why? 
<laughs> because God is a supernatural God. God is a miracle-working God. God is an all-powerful God with whom there is nothing impossible. Amen. We just need to, 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 to come alongside. We just need to get the revelation to get into that place with God where we can begin to experience and begin to walk in these things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, right now, just, just right now, pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you would open the eyes of my understanding to the truths of your word, that, Lord God, you would, you would bring me to that place, Lord, to know your voice, to, to hear your voice, to, to, to follow your voice, to heed your voice, to be led of your voice, that you will bring me into that connection uh, with your Holy Spirit, so that I can hear the things that you want to give to me. I can know your voice. I can know your will. I can know your heart, your desire, and I can come into this experience reality and this fullness. Lord, lead me in the way. Open my understanding. Help me to see. Help me to believe. And give me that heart. Fill me with that divine compulsion to seek you like never before so I can begin to enter into these things and really begin to experience this fullness of life with you. Praise God. I'm telling you, it. this is, this is, is, this is uh, something you need to get a hold of. I'm going to get a hold of. We all need to get a hold of because we've been missing out and God wants us to have it. Amen. Now, to begin... To begin, you have to personalize this for yourself. You have to see yourself in this. You have to personalize it for yourself because, again, Jesus said, my sheep. He's not talking about some special group. He's not talking about some, you, you know, the elite, some kind of, you know, you got to be apostle. You got to be, you know, some. No, his sheep is every single one of us. <laughs> this is for all of us. Every single person has been given the same Holy Spirit, the same Spirit of truth, the same uh, 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 Holy Spirit that will speak to you, that will tell you what the Father is saying, that will open your understanding, that will lead you into the truth, that will declare the things that belong to you. We just need to personalize it. We need to put ourselves in it. Amen. We need to personalize this first principle. We've got to get a hold of that revelation. God is always working and moving in me and around me and through me. God is always speaking to me. God is always uh, working to bring me closer, to bring me deeper, to bring me near. God is always working on my behalf. Amen. You need to meditate on these things. These are the kind of scriptures I'm talking about. You have to have a journal. You need to write these things down. You need to memorize these scriptures and meditate on it. Think about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to break it open to you so that it gets rooted deep in your heart so that light goes off, that revelation comes, and you begin to walk in these things. Meditate on it. Ask the Holy Spirit to make it a personal revelation to you so that it will begin to capture your heart. It will begin to take hold of you and take hold of your mind so that you begin to set your mind on these things and you begin to give yourselves to these things and you begin to walk in these things. This is where that true God consciousness begins to take place. When I know that I know that I know this living and personal God is with me and he is working in me and for me. He is always trying to direct me, always trying to speak to me, always moving in my life, this is what it is all about. Amen. So listen, let's, 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 let's pray one more time. Let's make this your prayer. This, I'm making this my prayer. You make this your prayer. Let's pray this with me. Just a simple prayer. But again, and again, this, let, let me just say this before I close out. Let me just say this. We, we, we need a revelation about prayer. We, we really need to get a hold of uh, 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 what prayer is about. You know, this is a gift that, that is so little used and so little understood that we really, again, rob ourselves and miss out on so much because we, we, we don't have this revelation. When the Bible says, uh, when the Bible tells us, 
if you ask anything according to my will, okay, it shall be done, okay? That's a revelation we need. Uh, I receive, whatever I pray, I receive. When I pray, I receive it. I believe it and I receive it. When you get a revelation of these things, you're going to see that uh, when, when, when we're talking about these kinds of studies, when you meditate on these things, you're just talking to God while you're doing it. You're praying these things. You're praying exactly what the word is saying so that these things will actually become a reality in our lives. So if you believe it, you'll receive it when you pray it. Okay. So pray with me right now. Just a simple prayer right now. Father, bring me into that intimacy with you. Bring me into that place of oneness, of hearing, of seeing, of knowing. Create that God consciousness in me that I will know that I know that I know that you are always with me. You are always present. You are always working. You are always speaking. You are always directing. You are always leading. You are always guiding me in your will and purpose. Give me that heart to hear and to follow you as one of your sheep. Give me ears to hear and eyes to see. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, again, I I just want to thank you for being uh, here with me tonight. Again, I apologize. Uh, Some things are beyond our control. Uh, Lost the internet, lost the phone at the beginning. Praise God, it came back. It looks like we made it through. But uh, let me encourage you to share this video. Let me encourage you to listen to it again. Meditate on it. Write down these scriptures. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the revelation. Because I'm telling you, God, God has things for us. God wants to bless us. God wants to be with us in a way that we have never experienced in our entire lives. God wants to show us things uh, that are going to blow our socks off. If we will just come alongside, if we will just surrender, if we will do our part, I'm telling you what, there is a life in God that you don't want to miss. Let me encourage you. Tell somebody they need to hear this word. And, and listen, this is, uh, uh, I believe this is number five in this series. Go back, listen to these things, because I'm telling you, this is one of the most powerful series I've ever done, and one of the most important, uh, especially in, in, in sight of the things this day that we're living in, the things that we're that are going on in this earth today and this in this nation, we need this more than ever before. And I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. It's going to transform you. It's going to bless you and make a big difference. Amen. So again, this is George Dello coming to you from Toronto, Ohio, Sunday morning, eleven o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to be having communion. Join us for our Sunday uh, morning service and be prepared to take communion with us. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, I'll be back on uh, with our uh, Bible study Tuesday night. That's for the the serious ones that want to go deep in the Word of God. And then next Wednesday night, we're going to continue in this uh, uh, divine encounters with God uh, because, again, this is so, so important and we need to get a hold of it. Amen. I appreciate you again. Thank you for being with us. I pray that you have a blessed week and uh, keep looking up because your uh, redemption draws nigh and uh, you don't want to miss out. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week and uh, 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 be, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen.